Yes, this really did happen. In 2015, a man woke up to a strange post-it note sitting on his desk. On it was a to-do list that he didn't recognize in handwriting that didn't look like his. Since he was up late the night before doing some work, he assumed he must have written out the list when he was half asleep and kind of forgot about it, so he just crumples it up and throws it away. Two weeks later, he wakes up to dozens of these post-it notes all over his wall, and they're all blank except for one that in the same weird handwriting says, Our landlord isn't letting me talk to you. Now feeling totally freaked out that some crazy person is crawling around his apartment at night, he starts looking for signs of a break-in, but there aren't any. Instead of calling the police, he shares his experience on Reddit asking for help, and one user's comment literally saves his life. Turns out the man was writing the notes to himself and then forgetting because his brain was slowly dying due to a carbon monoxide leak that was only discovered because a user suggested he install a detector. Extremely creepy story time on how my aunt passed away. So a little background information. About five years ago, my aunt had gotten pregnant. It was really weird because a few months before she got pregnant, the doctor told her that she would never be able to have kids. And her and her husband had been trying for years. Well, I think like two weeks after the baby was born, it had passed away. And I don't really know why. For some reason, my mom won't tell me. Which is weird, but anyways, after that, my aunt just felt like a lot of things weren't going the way that she wanted them to in her life. So she decided to get closer with God. Well, every Sunday night, we go to my grandparents' house for a family dinner. And while we were there, my aunt starts going on this whole rampage. She said that God's not giving her the answers that she needs, and I don't really know what she means by answers. So my grandparents kick her out because she's acting like a psycho. Well, the same night at 3 a.m. in the morning, we hear a knocking on the door. And lo and behold, it's my aunt. So my mom lets her in because she feels bad and feels like she's the only one that will actually listen to my aunt. So she makes everybody sit at the kitchen table. And she pulls out a Ouija board from her bag, like for part two. Creepy story time about how my aunt passed away, part two. So like I said, she makes us all sit down at the kitchen table and she pulls out a Ouija board. She was like, I found out how I can get some answers. I just feel like I need you guys around me for positive energy. And my family is very, very religious. Like we don't fuck with that shit because my mom felt bad for her she let her use it in our house but my mom didn't want my sisters and i around that so she just sent us to bed well the next morning i wake up and i ask my mom what happened with the ouija board situation my mom just said that it was really scary because before she thought it was like a load of bullshit and she said that her and my dad didn't touch the ouija board because like i said they were very religious and did not mess with that stuff but apparently it said for her not to buy a house with the numbers 2815 well, two years later, my aunt got remarried, and her and her husband ended up having two kids. So they bought a new house, and no, it didn't have the numbers on it. One of their kids accidentally shattered the glass door, so they went and got a new one, and it came with those exact numbers on it. Two days later, the house burnt down, and nobody survived. I caught my neighbor trying to open my apartment door. Should I be worried? Disclaimer is not my story time. I said me on Instagram. I just moved into my new apartment two months ago. Everything's been completely normal and fine up until a few weeks ago. I went to my mailroom to pick up some packages and there happened to be one of my neighbors there. He says his name is Jerry and he actually introduced himself to me. I had never seen him before, but he just said, hey, how are you? I said, hi. And then he said, are you new to the building? And I confirmed that I was new to the building. That's when he said that I looked familiar to him and he asked me where I went to school. I told him where I went to school and then he started asking me more questions. But the more questions he asked me, the more I realized he was just trying to find me on Facebook. I didn't give him my last name or anything. But ultimately, this guy knows where I live, so I was just like, whatever. That's when he started recommending restaurants and cafes around our neighborhood. He just kept talking and talking and talking. I ended up standing there for 10 minutes listening to him talk until I told him I had to leave. That's when he said it was so nice to meet me and that he'd see me around. Keep in mind, he does not know what floor I live on at this point. Then a few days later, I see him again at the mailroom. I said hello, but I made sure to act like I was in a hurry. But of course, he had to stop me and we talked again for like five minutes. Follow for part two. I caught my neighbor trying to open my apartment door. Should I be worried? Disclaimers and on my story time when I sent him on Instagram. I knew he was going to talk my ear off, so I told him I was in a hurry and I had to go. And he says, no worries, maybe we should catch up sometime. And I said, cool, bye. I did not say yes. A few hours later, I get on my Instagram and I see that he started following me. I wasn't super creeped out at this point. I was just like, okay, maybe he's just trying to be friendly. I instantly went and blocked him from seeing my stories. I didn't want him to keep tabs on me that way. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, I work from home. And I do have two dogs. My dogs are all always pretty quiet. I've never had a complaint about them. They really don't bark. Since I work from home, I walk them about three times a day. And remember, at this point, he doesn't know what floor I live on. At least I didn't think so. A few days later, I decided to go have dinner with one of my best friends. I left my apartment for literally 40 minutes because I try not to leave my dogs alone for too long. When I get off the elevator at my floor, I see the guy trying to open my door. He was pushing the door with his shoulder. I yelled at him from across the hallway and said, what are you doing? Then he looked shocked. Then he said, oh, sorry. I heard noise in your apartment and I wanted to make sure your dogs are okay. How does he know I have dogs? Part 3 is up.
I caught my neighbor trying to open my apartment door. Should I be worried? Disclaimers and all my story time is that I'm on Instagram. When I caught him red-handed trying to open my door, I asked him what he was doing. He said that he walked by and heard my dogs making really loud noises and that he just wanted to make sure that they were okay. My dogs were making zero noises and how did he know I had two dogs? And how did he know what floor I lived on? I was officially creeped out. He saw the look on my face and said, oh, I'm so sorry if I made you uncomfortable. I was just trying to check on your dogs. That's when I told him that he didn't need to do that and that it was okay and he could leave now. That's when he started freaking out. He said, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. I can tell I made you uncomfortable and I feel like I've ruined everything. That's when I told him that he hadn't ruined anything because nothing was going on. Then he said, maybe you should give me your phone number so that if something like this happens again, I can just call you. I said no immediately. I told him he could leave again and he walked away. He's halfway down the hallway and says, oh, we should still catch up for some coffee or something. What? I am concerned, but I don't know if I'm just freaking out for no reason. Could he have really been trying to help? Or am I right to think that he was trying to break in? I emailed my landlord and they said that they've never had a problem with him before. What the heck should I do? Am I the asshole for telling my mom she can't pick up my kid on his first day of daycare? When I got pregnant with my only kid in high school, my mom was super happy that she was finally going to be a grandma because my older sister is infertile. I felt honored to be a mom and I was decided to be a great one despite being a senior in high school. I was 18 by the way. I was set on naming my child Emmanuel after I found out I was having a boy. My sisters and I would often refer to him as Baby Manny. On the other hand, my mom would comment loudly that his name was to be Jonathan. I ignored her up until I gave birth that I decided to let her have her way and officially name him Jonathan. My mom only had daughters and she felt it was necessary to let her name the only boy in the family. He is almost three now and his dad and I split after his first birthday. So as a single mom, my mom offered to look after him while I was at work. She taught him to refer to her as mama even though Jonathan spent equally as much time with me. She recently started working and my whole family and I have been struggling with Jonathan. And the only logical thing to do was to put him in daycare, right? According to my mom, I'm quoting her, the worst and meanest mom ever. Am I the asshole for telling my mom she can't pick up my kid on his first day of daycare? For even considering that even though she loves to nag about me not being completely responsible for my kid, she tried to have my recently out of high school little sister look after him but I immediately said no. Because doing that would still make me half responsible for my kid and plus my sister has to live her own life and quite frankly she sucks for a babysitter. After I was disqualified for childcare subsidy help, I decided to do the most responsible thing pay out of pocket for childcare. Up until his first day, she threw arguments at me saying he's gonna die of crying too much, that he won't stand a day there, and that I don't love my son. Today was his first day and she called me twice, asking if I have any updates about his well-being after a few hours at daycare. I said he's doing perfectly fine and he hasn't cried once, according to the workers. She gets off at 10 a.m. from her part-time job and offered to pick him up after her shift because she's been crying all morning for him. At first I said yes and I called to let the workers know, but I had second thoughts and I let my mom know that I prefer to pick him up after my 9-hour shift mostly because I want to be the very first person he sees after his first day. She immediately got angry and said I'm the worst daughter and hung up on me. My dad agrees that I should be the one to pick him up after my shift. So am I the asshole? This is why you should always lock your bathroom door. It was the first night Marnie and her family moved into their new house. Before going to bed, she wanted to take a relaxing bath, but she could have never expected the terrifying things this would lead to. The rest of her family was in the living room watching TV, and a few moments later, Marnie ran out of the bathroom screaming. Turns out when Marnie was sitting in the bathtub, she heard what sounded like heavy breathing. Assuming it must be the wind, she tried to ignore it, but then she noticed something strange about her hair. Her hair was much longer than usual, and it was much darker than her hair used to be too. Marnie jumped out of the bathtub, but as she got up, the back of her head seemed to hit someone else's nose. Since then, she's been too terrified to be in the bathroom alone, convinced that someone else was in the bathtub with her that night. Am I the asshole for changing all the locks in my house without letting my mom know? When I, 23 male, was 15, my dad died. My mom moved her new partner in just two months later. Anyway, my dad left everything to me, not even a dime to her. They weren't married. The will was so structured that she couldn't challenge it. She attempted and even asked me to pass over one of my properties to show my new dad that he was welcome. She would also always prioritize his kids to keep them happy. She would go on trips with them but ask me, wouldn't you like to go to your grandparents better? I knew what that meant. When I turned 17, she asked me to leave. Am I the asshole for changing all the locks in my house without letting my mom know? She asked me to leave my own house because I kept fighting with her man. I reminded him of whose house it was and he wanted to play the man of the house card. I called him John Conroy. 
My grandparents told me to avoid confrontation, so I went to live with them. My mom would visit me often and tell me how much she loved me but needed to keep peace at home. After college, I decided to check my properties and also the one my mom is living at. I wanted to renovate it to rent it since it's a good one and can't help me afford my masters. I went to inform my mom but no one was there and I later found out they were on vacation. Can you solve this mystery? This is a story of three girls who heard a rumor about a tunnel being haunted. They didn't believe it so they went inside, but something terrifying happened that made them question reality. Can you figure out the truth here? All the clues to what really happened are hidden in what I'm about to say. So these three girls went into the tunnel that was rumored to be haunted by the ghost of a girl who died there. Her case remained unsolved and no body was ever found. This intrigued the three girls so they decided to pay the tunnel a visit. When they first looked into the tunnel, it was pitch black. This scared them, but they they decided that they wouldn't believe the ghost stories they heard and went in anyways. One of the girls even had an idea. She said, let's just run through the entire tunnel as fast as we can. But none of them expected what would happen next. The three girls ran and ran into the dark tunnel and didn't stop until they reached the other side. Then one of the girls said, I told you the stories weren't true. There are no ghosts here. The second girl said, yeah, holding hands definitely made it less scary. I'm glad I was in the middle. Me too, said the third. What really happened here? Can you solve this mystery? asshole for refusing to RSVP to my sister's wedding because I'm required to write an application essay just to attend. So I'm a 27 female and my only sister is getting married next February. Destination wedding no less. I have doubts whether this wedding is actually going to happen with the pandemic and everything but she is totally set on moving forward. Anyways, because of the pandemic, her original venue has made her cut down on guests because they're cutting capacity by half. As a result, she's sending out re-invites that asks everyone to RSVP again. But in order to figure out who to invite and who to cut, she's asking all confirmed guests to submit two 250-word essays to two questions. The gist is that they'll use these essays to choose who can come or not based on people's enthusiasm. People who don't write the essays at all will be automatically disqualified. I just feel really insulted by all of this. The questions aren't even pandemic related. It's broad topics like, why do you still want to celebrate this day with us? And what will attending our wedding? Am I the asshole for refusing to RSVP to my sister's wedding because I'm required to write an application essay just to attend? So she's blatantly looking for people to kiss ass and tell her why they really want to go. Anyways, I told her in advance I'm not writing 500 words on why I need to attend her wedding, spend my own money on plane tickets and hotels, and buy her a present. This has really rubbed her and my parents the wrong way. She said that to keep things fair, if I don't fill out the RSVP correctly, I won't be saved a spot. I said fine with me. Then my parents said if I don't show up, I'm gonna be in big effing trouble with all our relatives, so just write the essays. I'm already annoyed at the thought of spending thousands and coming home to quarantine, but I will not belt out 500 words on how this is totally my choice. Edit. Sister has framed these essays as surveys, but there's a word limit requirement, so if you don't reach it on the Google Forms, you can't even submit. My parents think this is perfectly reasonable, nice even, because my sister is letting everyone have the chance to attend. My wife and I had our second baby two months ago, nine weeks, and as with our first, I am breastfeeding. The first time around, my family were meh about me nursing. I was much more conservative and covered up until we had a dangerous situation where my daughter overheated and breathed in milk. It was very scary. She's fine now, though. Anyway, this time around, I've warded off all types of covers. I am boob-free, and my daughter has a much easier time nursing. My family formula feeds, so this is all new for them. My brother-in-law is less happy with my recent confidence. We all got invited out for my dad's birthday dinner, and obviously, I took my little ones with me. While we were there, my baby got hungry and I pet her, as one does. Afterwards, my brother-in-law mentioned how things like that make him uncomfortable and asked if I'd cover up the baby nursing while eating. I told him no and we ordered. When the food got there, she got hungry again, so I popped out a lady to feed her, you know. He made another comment about not wanting to see boob while he was eating. I was pretty annoyed, so I just apologized with a smile and said something along the lines of, sorry, I'll just get this covered for you, and flung the blanket I had on my lap over his head. I'm still proud of myself for managing it, to be honest. Even if it was an asshole move, it was a damn good throw. A few people outside our family started laughing, and in his flurry to get it off, dropped it into his meal and had to reorder, so we all ate while he had to wait for his food again. I made things pretty tense, but no one mentioned it again. Afterwards, my dad told me that it was immature and he wouldn't be inviting me to a family meal again if that's how I was going to act. Following that, everyone is upset, some even going as far as to call me a bad mother because I was being petty. I personally am not super sure that I was in the wrong, as my wife nor anyone else thinks so, but they all tend to be quite nice to me post-baby due to hormones. Obviously, I feel pretty bad about making him wait for his food, but that wasn't directly my fault. Am I the asshole for tossing a blanket over my brother-in-law's head when he said that he didn't want to see my baby nurse?
Story time on how I beat up a four-year-old in pre-K. Okay, so boom. I know this sounds crazy, but you let me know if I'm in the wrong here. So I work in a daycare in Florida. It's very prestige, and parents pay a lot of money to put their kids in this daycare. As a teacher, I'm obviously not allowed to hit kids because that's inappropriate, but sometimes kids can really get you out of character. So this four-year-old boy was gifted, which means he was super smart. Also about to skip pre-K because he was that smart. But him being smart also came with him being very aggressive. Like if he raised his hand to answer a question but you don't call on him, he would get mad and yell at me. Or if a student didn't know an answer to a question, he would call that student stupid then give the correct answer. He was aggressive and his parents did nothing to stop him. Well, one day this four-year-old boy took it too far. We were at the playground and for some reason he was mad at one of the girls in his class. I see him bullying her and I told him to stop. And he did. I turned around to tend to another student and boom. Part two on how I beat up a four-year-old in pre-K. Okay, so boom, like I said, the little boy that was gifted was mad at one of the girls in his class. I seen him bullying her and told him to stop, and he did. I turned around to tend to another student, and boom. When I turned back around, I see him push her to the floor, and she starts crying. I ran over to her, and this little girl was on the floor bleeding. She was pushed onto the concrete floor, and her bone on her knees was exposed. She was a very little, fragile, skinny girl, and four years old, so that push was really Real bad she was bleeding i ran for help called an ambulance and they came and took her i then took him to my classroom y'all and i beat his ass i mean i can't even lie to y'all i really beat that boy up he was crying in shock because i'm sure he was never disciplined and i got fired the girl did make a full recovery but she had a very long recovery time now i can't work with kids anymore but i don't feel like i did it. am i the asshole for not covering my scars around my boyfriend's family I, 25 female, have significant scarring on both of my arms and legs. They're over a decade old, and I'm pretty used to covering them up for work and other situations. I no longer feel a sense of shame when wearing clothes that show them, and that's taken a lot of work on my end. My boyfriend of 10 months invited me to go with him to his family's cookout. I've met his parents before, and they never said anything about my scars, but there will be other family members. I wore shorts and a tank top, which was modest considering that it was over 95 degrees. His sister approached me talking about my scars and said that she doesn't want her kids to see all that. Am I the asshole for not covering my scars around my boyfriend's family? She said she didn't want her kids to see all that because they're quite young. She asked if I had anything to cover up with and I told her I didn't because it was hot. She offered to let me borrow a shirt from her parents and I said I'd rather leave if I'm offending everyone. She huffed and signaled my boyfriend and he said I was fine and she was being ridiculous. She said her and her kids would leave if that was the case, which attracted the attention of their dad. He told them to let it go and the whole thing was really embarrassing. We left early and I asked him to drop me off at my place even though we had plans to watch a movie together. I'm so excited. Today's my boyfriend and I's four year anniversary. So let's get ready. I'm thinking we'll start with skin prep, then we'll do hair, and then we'll do makeup. If you follow me, you might be like, Amanda, you got a boo? I just don't talk about him. And the one reason is, this account is Amanda Frisch, not Amanda Frisch and boo. No, I'm just kidding. But I do feel weird shoving my phone, like, in my family's face or my boyfriend's face, so that's why I kind of just don't. But a few years ago when I was posting to YouTube regularly, I did a My Boyfriend Does My Skincare Routine video, and it was pretty cute. Quick side note, this Caudalie serum... It is so good for getting rid of dark spots. Like, my acne has been so faded and it's only been like a week. So like I said, we've been together four years. We met going into my second year of my master's in Boston. Then we spent another year dating in Boston. We did long distance for a year because I came to do my doctorate in Indiana. And then now we've lived together for almost two years. COVID kind of played a role in that. We're going to be out all day, so I want to make sure to use all the SPF. Make sure to follow for all the festivities. And in the meantime, let's do some hair. You might not know this about me, but I have three degrees, including a doctorate. Let's do her makeup and talk about it. So I'm originally from Wisconsin. She's a Midwestern girl. We love Culver's. And I'll be real with you. I was a band nerd in high school. I started on euphonium and then I started playing a little bit of trombone. And when I was in high school, I was like, I'm going to be the world's greatest band director. So I majored in music at in college. I went to University of Wisconsin Platteville for my undergrad. It's about a couple hours from my home. While I was there, I started playing a lot of bass trombone and I got my first professional experience. I auditioned into this performing group that basically toured Wisconsin all summer in costumes, singer, dancers, choreography. And it was then I was like, I'm ready for the stage. I want to be a performer. So I switched my degree from education to performance and got ready for grad school. For my master's, I went to the Boston Conservatory. It was a hard experience, but I think it was necessary for where I was at the time. And then I got an offer I couldn't pass up. 
So I went to Ball State for my doctorate. Now I have a Doctor of Arts and a Secondary in Entrepreneurial Studies. If you have any questions about the journey, let me know in the comments. This is going to be a story time on how I met my fiancé. Okay, first and foremost, no one knows how I met him because that shit's hella embarrassing. I don't tell anybody. I met my fiancé through fucking Bumble. So it was a late night and my best friend had met her husband through Tinder, I believe. Okay, and she was the one who was like, no, Anna, you have to stay on the dating app. Be patient, like you'll meet someone. And I was like, um, girl, no, because everybody on this dating app, all they want to do is, you know what? So she was like, before you delete it, give it one more try. Literally that same night, I swiped right on my fiance. So I didn't fucking talk to him because I thought he looked like an asshole. But I was like, fuck it. I'm still going to swipe right. Whatever. One more asshole in my life. And he actually extended his time. He like super liked it and extended his time because I was not talking to him. So I was like, okay, bet. I'll talk to you. I kid you not, from that day on, we like never looked back. So the next day, I was actually going to Disneyland with one of my college friends. And he was like, do you want to hang out? And I was like, mm, I'm sorry, I'm going to Disneyland. Long story short, we got kicked out of Disneyland. So then my dumbass was like, let me hang out with this total stranger at his house. He could have fucking like murdered me or some shit. So that day we hung out and we hung out for hours. I'm not even like fucking shitting you. That day I knew, I knew I was going to marry that man. You know how they say like when you know, you know, bitch, I fucking knew. I knew I was going to marry this man. His grandma thinks we met at like a diner or something. She thinks I was like the waitress and he was like the server or the cook or something. And then my mom just never asks. Like she just never asks. So when people ask us how we met, we say rolling loud. This is why parents should believe their kids. In 2010, a 15-year-old boy started to notice that the door to his attic, which was in his bedroom, was always open. One day, when his mom's giving him a hard time about being lazy, he's like, well, you're one to talk. You always leave my attic door open. She's like, I haven't touched your attic door in months, and nobody else has either. Not easily frightened, the boy decides to leave the attic door open. And so he's laying in bed, and he kind of looks over at the door, and standing in the door frame is a figure staring right at him. He bolts, tells his parents, they don't believe him, and then six months later, they move anyway. A few years later, the boy discovers his favorite teacher actually moved into his old house. And so he jokingly asks her, you ever see any ghosts walking around your attic? Her face got completely serious, and she's like, you know, as soon as we moved in, the door to the attic kept opening. So we investigated, and we found a trap door that led onto the roof. Someone had been crawling in through that entrance and living in the attic for years. I'm at asshole for not allowing my cousin to announce her pregnancy at my baby shower. My husband and I are finally expecting our rainbow baby after years of trying. It's safe to say that our family and I are freaking excited. My mother is super excited. She's been planning our baby shower for months and she's been the biggest help with this pregnancy. A few weeks ago, my aunt told my mother that my cousin is also pregnant and we're super happy for her. However, my aunt says that she plans to announce her pregnancy at my baby shower since we're having a big party anyways. She said it's not a big deal. We can both share the day. I said absolutely not because I've been waiting for this day forever and it should be all about me and my rainbow baby. My mom is on my side and told my aunt she better not say anything. Last Saturday was my baby shower and everything was amazing. When a time came for us to eat cake, my aunt said, hold on everyone, and went outside to go grab something. I followed her out. My aunt decided to bring a cake announcing my cousin's pregnancy. My mom and I both told her she's not bringing that in. My aunt threw a fit saying this is a baby shower, it's for babies, and this day's about her too. She was screaming so we kicked her out now everyone's mad at us. This is why you should always keep pictures of your parents. A little girl named Olivia who lived a very quiet life decided to check her homework assignments that were posted online. The teacher posted that they needed to write down their favorite memory with their family as well as bring a photograph. Olivia then writes about how her and her mom play dolls every night in the basement before bed and that she has a lot of fun doing so. She finishes her paragraph and then looks in her dad's drawer for a photograph of mom. She only found pictures of her mom from high school but decided to use it anyway. Olivia goes to bed and wakes up the next morning. Once she arrives at school, the teacher then says, let's start presenting our project. Then the teacher called Olivia's name to present. Olivia then begins to read about how her and her mom play dolls every night and then pulls out the photograph. As soon as Olivia pulled out the photograph, her teacher's face goes numb. She then asks Olivia if she can take a closer look at the photograph. She then recognized her mom as one of her previous students. Then the teacher asks, where did you get this photo? Olivia says, my dad keeps them in his drawer. The teacher, shocked, sits down Olivia and pulls out an old newspaper. The newspaper headline, local high school teen murdered, boyfriend gone missing. The teacher then looks at Olivia and says, your mom has been dead for 14 years. 
for the people that say like i don't like to wear a lot of makeup or like that's so much makeup i could never wear that much could you never wear this much or do you just not know how to do it i'll leave that there just a question